Hello, everyone. Does it work already? Someone in chat, let me know if I'm if you can hear me already. Thanks, Shai. All right, people slowly trickling in. Dun, 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 dun. Now we only have to wait for Benedict. Let's wait for Bina. Bina is there. I'm gonna stop sharing until we figured out what to do with Bina. Woohoo! Benedict! Go. Hey Stefan, how are you doing? I, I was already worrying if you have enough access to 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 enter this whole session here. No, it's all fine. It's all fine. Cool. All right. So let's uh, give the whole thing uh, another two, three, four, five minutes. For the people Thanks that so are here. already watching, welcome. We're doing Gatsby and Contentful today. And um, in a few minutes, we're, we're going to kick it off. So let me just bring in what I have prepared. Here we go. I should be able to share a screen like that um maybe Bene, before we start maybe you want to um check if you can screen share sure yeah oh. here we go look at technology can we swap, swap that out now here somehow i think you can double click on Bam. I can double click on yours. So we have an inception over here. Wonderful. Wonderful technology in 2021. How's life been? Uh, life is wonderful. It's getting warmer outside. That's great. It is fairly cold today. So, so for the people watching, Ben and I, we both live and work in beautiful Berlin and we survived a terrible snow revival over the last two weeks. <laughs> oh yeah, but it was, it was great to have a lot of snow again. We, we missed this in a few years. So. Yeah, we, we haven't had snow for quite a while. So maybe the people in chat, um, before we kick things off, maybe you want to say hi and maybe say where, where, where you come from, because I always think it's, uh, it's fascinating with these online events to see where people are actually joining in from. Um, that would be super lovely. The way that we're... Amy is from the UK and Arizona. Hey, Ron. Hey, Amy. How's life? Nepal. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my God. Not that we're getting nervous here. Living the dream here. Nice. US Texas. Hey, Claro. Hey, Ron. Hey, Claire. Nice. Amy finished just work. So in, in one, two minutes, <laughs> that's exciting. Thanks. Thanks for, for giving, for being active in the, in the chat. So in a minute or two, we're gonna, we're gonna kick things off. And what we're gonna do today is that Ben and I will build a Gatsby contentful photo blog right from scratch. We've got some prepared some materials. You, hello Astrid from Germany. Um, happy that you're here. So we're gonna implement everything from scratch. You can uh, follow along, but we also prepared a GitHub repository so you can do everything that we do here right now um, in your own pace later. And we are happy to answer any questions that are that are on the way. So if you have any questions on the way, I will have a close eye onto the chat while Bene does all the heavy lifting here today um, with lots of Gatsby and coding magic. 
And so, hey, Chuck, how's life? Um, so if you have any questions, just tag along. And what do you think? Should we kick it off, Bene? I guess we should give it another one or two minutes. Other people maybe just coming over from the other workshops. Fair enough. So we have Roger from NJUS. What is it? What is NJ? Mm. New Jersey. <laughs> All right. Oh, I should, probably should. <laughs> I should have known that. Did you disconnect on purpose, Ben? No. All right, hop then, in. Then. Let's hop, hop in and hop out. So we have Montre Montreal. And then that is going nicely here. Um, the repository, we will share that in a moment. Um, you can follow along if you want to. We might be a little bit quick for that one. Um, let me just pull in the repository for you already. So the repository that we're going to working with is um, available under ctfl.io, which is short for content. I just put it in the chat. Ah, professionals here. Wonderful. So we're going to work, work our way from there and um, we're going to do things live. Hey, Arisa from Stuttgart. Hello. You gave the talk yesterday, Arisa, wasn't it? It was good. Yeah, great talk. Good job. So you can follow along with the with with the repository. There are several um, pull requests included already, so you can follow on your own pace. And we're gonna make a complete rundown, and the videos will be available later. So that's how we're gonna roll here today. And then, um, no, we're just pretending to be Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, uh, we we needed a, we needed a fetchy fetchy title. Um, it's, so what? It's ba uh, you basically ahead. will get a private photo blog, so you can post your personal um, pictures or for whatever your topic you're gonna pick and deploy to any site using the new Gatsby cloud hosting or Netlify, whatever. Um, yeah. So I think it's Ar Ar your personal photo blog. Yeah, Arisa is on point. Insta ish. <laughs> exactly. Let's see how that one goes. <laughs> We're going to manage. So how about we start at five minutes after seven? All right. I don't have a countdown ready. So dun, 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 dun. Well, okay, this is just 45 seconds. Okay, I see the counter going down. So maybe um, how about we go get started here? Cool. So, hello, everybody. My name is Stefan, and with me is Benedict. Uh, we are both living in Berlin. Um, Benedict, how is life? Yeah, life is wonderful. Um, I'm Benedict from Berlin, as Stefan just mentioned. Um, I'm maintaining the Gatsby Source Contentful plugin, and today I want to show you like an example how you can use our plugin to get your own data in the shape you imagine into Gatsby and out into the world. And you were working hard over the last few weeks to get ready for the new features that were released yesterday, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I made some, um, so made some implementations with the new image plugin, so we can support it straight away with the launch. Um, also, there's a current version of the source plugin ready for V3. There are a few warnings if you installed it before, but no worry, everything will work, and the warnings will be gone in the next patch. <laughs> Cool. And with this, I think we can dive just right in. Um, so the people that are maybe not familiar with Contentful, so Contentful is a content platform. You could also call it a headless CMS. And what that basically provides you is a UI where you can edit, manage, add all your content, and then you can receive all the data that you put into uh, Contentful via a set of APIs. And what we're going to uh, why would you want to do this? Usually what you want to do is that you want to use fancy technology like Gatsby and you uh, want just to, uh, what you want to do is you want to install some plugins and maybe fetch some API data so that you can write your API, uh, your React applications or Gatsby sites with whatever you want to do. 
And before we want to move on, move on I uh, would like to, I didn't introduce myself, did I? So I'm Stefan, uh, I work in the developer relations team at Contentful. And if you have questions around uh, Contentful, Gatsby, um, what I want to um, advise you is go to contentful.com slash developers. You find our documentation there, you can find additional resources. We do quite a little bit of live streaming recently. So if that's your jam, you can join these too. And most, most, uh, most importantly, we have a fairly active Slack chat community. So if you have questions or you want to follow along with other people, um, you can go to contentful.com slash uh, developers and you can make your way um, to Slack when you hit this chat link there. And then um, uh, we're going to say hi when you pop up. And if you have any questions, we are, we are happy to help. So being a plugged it already. So for this workshop, what we did is that we prepared a GitHub repository, which you can find in the chat. Um, uh, it is ctlfio uh, slash gatsbyconf workshop. Bena is professional here, pasting it up again. Wonderful. And what we're going to do is that we're going to, we have the repository ready and we will implement um, our whole way to um, a full running Gatsby site that you can use to host and manage and upload your photos. And the agenda for today is that we will start from scratch. Um, so Bena does all the heavy work and I will just ask her questions and um, uh, listen to all the wisdom that he has to share. So we're going to connect everything to Contentful. Um, we're going to set up some routes for for the home, uh, for the home route and the index route. Then we will add pagination. I learned about a wonderful plugin that is called Awesome Pagination. Um, there was a pro yes. tip from Bena. Then we will set up several detail pages for every post. And yeah, then we add some hashtags because what is a photo site without a bunch of hashtags? And that is that what we're going to do in the next one hour and 52 minutes and this is now the moment where i will hand it over to benedict and we'll go into question mode and we see how this whole thing will go all right let's go so let me share my screen so take your moment to have a look at my screen um maybe first of all i'm gonna show you the final result because i always like uh, to see where i'm gonna end uh, when i lo look at so those sessions so we have a very simple page we have three posts at the moment um, with some random amazing content I came up with. You have a detail page, you have hashtags, you can even navigate through the hashtags and see only posts that are like aligned to these hashtags. So um, first of all, I want to show you how this like <clears throat> looks in Contentful and how you're gonna structure your content model. And we're gonna add a small example post. And with the guards of the CI deployments, we're gonna see an update out there in a few seconds. So this is the Contentful interface. Um, I'm looking at the content Bina, model right now. Bina, can yes. you bump up the font sizes a little bit? Yes, no worries. So should be better, I guess, a little bit too much. So um, in Contentful, you can define your own content model and content types. For this example, we need only a single one. It's a post on our new photo blog, and it contains a few fields. Um, most importantly, the image down here, which is the actual image we're going to show, a title, a slug for the URL, some body text formatted in Markdown, and the hashtags. So um, to so much about the content structure. How will this look like in Contentful? This is our listing of content. Here you can see these three example posts you just seen in the in the deployed version above. So let's head just into any post and you can see this is how the interface looks like. You have the title, the slug field, you can define your image and some text. So let's create a new one to so everybody can see how the experience would be to create a new post. So first of all, what did we do? Yeah, we are at GatsbyConf 2021 and we want to add an image. So I thought I cannot take a selfie in front of the booth or the area. So I just take the photo uh, booth and <laughs> just take a snapshot of the last lucky people and they will be our post for today's example post. So let's head back into the UI of Contentful. I create a new media to upload and I just select it from my device. So this will take a second because it don't have six megabytes. 
Yeah, it's a screenshot on Retina, despite <laughs> that's, that's a little bit bigger. But it doesn't matter for us later on, because we use Gatsby and Contentful, better have the uh, high quality original image and the system takes care of getting the right size for your device. So call it uh, Gatsby conf photo wall, publish the image I just uploaded, go back to the form and we see here the image is set. Let's give it a title, Gatsby conf 2021. Hello from Gatsby conf. We go and hashtags, very important. So let's go. Let's have Gatsby conference. Fun. What else? Sunglasses. Session. Sunglasses. Ah, huh. of course. Live coding session. It doesn't like it because you're gonna call it. You should maybe go lowercase. Uh, that's your own decision for the example. I can now put uppercase here. Probably you don't want that. You can change this in the configuration of Contentful. So I created a new entry. Form is not too big overall. So I just go and publish it. So as you can see in our content list, we now have four entries here. These I made last week and the other one here um, just released. And as soon as our server is done, we might even see it on the deployed um, version where you can find the link already in the repository we mentioned. It's over here at the right side. You can find the link and probably in a minute, or two, the build process will be done and a new version is deployed. Maybe even faster. Let's see how fast Gatsby Cloud goes today. Um, all right. Cool, Bino. Be so, before we move on, how much about Contentful? Yeah, let, let me bring you some 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 for the people that haven't seen Contentful before. So Contentful, what we what can you go to the content model section, Bene? So what Contentful yeah. provides you is that you can when you start and want to follow along with what we're doing here is when you signed up for Contentful, you can go to the content model section. And basically, you can always define the data structures that you need on the fly. And that is one of the beauties with Contentful and um, these content platforms is out there is what, what we did uh, in a little bit of preparation of, of this session here is that we added a new content type. So a content type is always like a new type of data that you want to have that could be posts, authors, or whatever you want to have. Ah, oh, wonderful. So we could now, we're not using that, but we could set up new things. So, and when you create a new content type in Contentful, what you can do is that you can on the fly define the structures that we want to have. So usually you have something with a title and um, then you can define, <laughs> then you can define, define the um, uh, field types. And the beauty here is that when you're setting something up with Contentful is that you can define your data structures once and then editors in the parallel can start working with the data and you as a developer, you can um, go and just uh, implement the things with the tech stack that you wanna, wanna, wanna have. So what you just saw is that Bena now set up a new content type for something like, um, for something that could be a product, it only has a title right now. But when we now go then to the content section, what is possible is that we can immediately can start adding and editing these kind of things because we just defined a new structure that should be available in our um, content management system. So, and this is all it takes to um, set up Contentful with the technology choice that you want to use. So in our case here, we're going to play around a lot with, with Gatsby, but this is really the beauty of these kind of systems that you can set up these things on the fly. And I, I do a lot of web stuff and sometimes I just need to edit something that goes into a tiny widget. What I usually do is I go into Contentful, I set something up very tiny, but then people can actually edit that. So if you have questions there, um, you can start with Contentful and start with a fresh space. Um, and then you can uh, take it along from there and then you can uh, get it into Gatsby. And we're gonna show you how to do that uh, in this session here. All right. So what we want to do first is to somehow get data from Contentful into Gatsby. For this, um, 
I prepared like a basic repository, which is very, very close to what you're used to from the default Gatsby starter. Um, it has the Contentful source plugin installed as, um, as this dependency and, um, at, and tooling that helps us to set environment variables so we can have the connection credentials to Contentful stored in a safe um, way. Um, the already mentioned repository has open pull requests. These represent the steps we're going to take now. So everybody at home later on can just jump into the step. They want to have a look and see the actual change, changes. So I basically start off from zero and will now connect Gatsby with Contentful and start up with a fresh branch. I prepared this already. So here we have a new start. Let's open the editor. So you see it's a pretty, this is the default you more or less get out of um, the Gatsby starter. I added dot env um, support so we can just have our own environment configuration files to store the credentials to connect to Contentful API. <clears throat> so what you want to do first is you want to install, thank you the um, Contentful source plugin, um, Gatsby source Contentful. Um, this is already done in this branch, so I'm going to skip this now, but you regularly just install the plugin and afterwards you want to configure it. This is not this is pretty trivial. It always says the same pattern. And uh, usually I just look it up even in the readme on my own. <clears throat> so let's just do that. That's Google things. Professional developers, even Google stuff, yes. Um, or don't feel bad if you have to Google. So absolutely here, not. Here we have it. Um, so this is the pattern Gatsby gives us, and we have a few configuration options to uh, to ease up stuff here. I will just copy paste now from from the repository. It basically um, helps us to have a development and a production environment at the same time. Um, let me add it from the branch. So this is what we want to do, actually. So it basically does the same what we just seen, except that we additionally take the host and the environment out of it to like get uh, be able to use the full feature set of Contentful. Um, so, Bene, do you want to maybe give a few sentences about all these variables and what all these do? That's a uh, quite a yes. big chunk here. Yes. So, um, what you mostly interested in uh, are in is, is your connection token and your space ID. So, what is all of this? So, when you go back to Contentful, what you see here it's a thing that we call space. And when you want to connect to your space, you need to open the API keys and the settings and create new um, connection credentials so you can connect to the uh, um, backend or the API of Contentful. So we create a new key here. I call it Gatsby conf delete soon. So that is the thing with the, with the Contentful APIs to retrieve the data that you put into it. You have to authorize the request with a given token that you that you have. And this is exactly what Benedict is setting up here right now. Correct. And I put delete me soon on there because you're all going to see soon my connection co token. You should not share this with the, with the public. So you I shouldn't just... be live with 84 people. Is that what you're saying? Uh, exactly. That's why I'm <laughs> deleting it after this talk straight away. Um, when even in our case, if this one would leak, um, you can only see content that will be, um, the, the purpose is to be public anyway. So it would be bad, but not as bad as losing the password to your production server. Yeah. So let's go in the end uh, development file that helps us to set the variables. As you can see, the, the it's just about the upper two, the other two we are set already. So first I want to take here my, uh, put in my access token. Here, now you can all see it, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> and the space ID can easy copy from the interface. Um, we 
ago. What I now just did, I took the delivery API. That means we would see um, the published content, um, but Confo also has a feature to have a look at the content where you did not publish yet. So you can prepare content and so on. And for this, you have the other token down there. That's the preview API token. So actually I want to use that one because it's using the, our preview API down here. We have the production file, which will be used for regular builds. It's down here. And for this one, we want to use the delivery token. It's in, let me just repeat it. So the space ID tells where to look at and the other two tokens are for like permissions. So can you actually read the stuff out of the space? The first one you want to use for your production environment. That's the stuff that got published and the only stuff that's published um, can be seen to the public. And the preview API token is if you want to have a look at unpublished stuff so editors can prepare content and so on. Before hitting publish. Before hitting publish. So you can add re re review workflows and stuff like this, especially when working with uh, multiple people. This is very, very helpful. Yeah. So what we did, um, we, we have now these credentials in our files. The small code snippet above here, it's in the branch already. We'll take care that the file is loaded depending if you do Gatsby develop or Gatsby build. Um, and down here, the, our credentials are wired into the configuration of the plugin. And if I didn't miss anything here, we can already start the build, see it connecting co to Contentful and figure out how data, the Contentful data looks inside of Gatsby. So let's give it a try, Stefan. Let, let's do that. Before we do that, we have one question from Mario in, in the chat and he asks, um, does the order of Gatsby plugins actually matter or can, can, could we place the Contentful plugin anywhere in, in the plugins array? Um, there are a few plugins in, in Gatsby where you have to take care of. Usually it shouldn't matter. If it matters, you can find it in a readme and you can, I'm kind of on a safe side if you put all the source plugin at the very top. So data fetching happens for sure first, and but actually it sh shouldn't matter. Maybe my information is outdated. I'm using Gatsby since version one, so maybe this isn't even true anymore and it really <laughs> doesn't matter. So um, it shouldn't. And if it does, you find the information in the readme. Cool, let's kick it off then, huh? Okay. Let's start our Gatsby develop command, which I just put in an NPM script here for sake of structure. And as you can see, it's connecting down here to Contentful. It's all pretty fast. Let's slow it down. Here it starts to syncing all the data. It got nine different um, items from Contentful. It's five entries and four assets. You can also see the Contentful product node was created as we just created a new content type called product and added a new one in there. And if we go down, we can see the deployment worked. So let's have a look at our page. And people using Gatsby 4 will know this. This is the very starter with a changed copy. But what, um, so we can't see anything, but what we can do in Gatsby is to have a look at GraphQL, which gives us the option to write GraphQL queries and to have a look what data is available. So before we, I even start coding a few or a detail page or whatever, first thing ever is to have a look in the GraphQL and see if I can actually get the data, get all the data I need, and then I write an UI that actually represents the data. So let's give it a try. Can you also bump that one up a little bit? Yes, should I use the posts or the product we just created? Let's show the product that we just created because we just did it on the fly. All right. So um, writing check uh, GraphQL. <laughs> JQuery. <laughs> no. Was released in a new version. It was trending on Hacker News yesterday. Oh, uh, really? Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe on Christmas next year. Um, so writing a query here can be really tough. I even struggle for myself. So luckily, we can just um, use the Explorer on the left side to like create our um, or query on the way. So we want to have um, a listing of all content for products. Um, we want to see inside of the nodes and we want to see the title of that node. And this is already the first query. I can execute it. And as you can see, we have one product with Gatsby swag. What we just 
traded over here in Contentful. Oh, thanks. So. Nice. So in, in, in uh, graph, uh, graphical, um, all the data coming from Contentful has this prefix. Is that right? Yes. Uh, by default, it's uh, prefix with Contentful. You can change this with a configuration, configuration setting in a plugin. But um, in case I have collisions, or easy. why would I change in, that? Yeah, in case you have collisions or you're very, um, you have reasons for like structure, project impediments, or whatever, you have a reason to change it, but you can go with the default usually. Cool. Um, I never found a use for myself, but there have been people that had a asking use. for it. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, what you can see here is not just the contentful data, of course, it's all the other stuff uh, in, in Gatsby as well. So if you have uh, loading in files with file system source, you can see them in there as well. So let's have a look at the posts. So we have to, we have the posts and it already gives me a huge variety of options where I can have a look at. Um, these are like fields we created in a content model, um, additionally with a few other um, fields that help us to identify it. So we can go with the title. We get a list of the titles of the posts we have. Pretty helpful is also the created update, which just um, adds the date when the entry was created in Contentful. You can also format it. So now, uh, I probably don't remember the moment JS formatting rules, but something like this, you can look it up on moment JS. It's what it's using at the background, all over Gatsby that's not contentful specific. And you can get like the um, patterns you can use for formatting the date. We will use this feature later on to have nicely formatted date and not timestamps for JSON timestamps in there. Um, what else can we get? Um, the Slack is important for us to create a URL. Here we go. Um, I want to see the image for sure. I want to leave the most important for the last. Uh, uh, okay, so drama. <laughs> I see. Here, exactly. Um, so we have the the body field, which has actually a few subfields. You will especially learn later on why. Um, and here we can see the um, raw markdown um, content from the post. So last but not least, the image itself gives us plenty of option. One reason for it is that we support Gatsby image and, and Gatsby plugin image. You will get pretty soon, I guess, deprecation warnings on the, on the old variants. You can for sure use it for a while or in Gatsby version three, but at some point um, we are only supporting the new one and it's way better. I can just recommend move it. I tried it for some of my own personal project and it's not a big deal to migrate from the old Gatsby um, image to the plugin image. It's, it's wonderful. Um, nice. So what have we in here? Let's start with contentful related stuff. We can get the ID within contentful. And the now that you're at the ID, Thomas in the question in the chat asked, what's the difference between contentful ID and ID? All right. So <clears throat> um, data is stored in contentful and moved to Gatsby. Gatsby has this GraphQL database we're just looking at that like caches the data in between. Um, we cannot use the contentful ID as ID for Gatsby because contentful is a multilingual system and we have multiple values on a single ID, like you can have, um, this is an untranslated, but you could basically have the title in German, in English and Italian as well. And that's why the ID in Gatsby is actually a combination of the contentful ID and the language. Um, hmm. I didn't know that. Yes, here we go. And uh, it's using the hashing algorithm and the rhythm by Gatsby. That's why you can just see the hash here, but that's why there's the difference. If you want to identify an entry from Contentful, use the ID and filter by locale as well as soon you are in a multi -loc language project. If you're not working with multi multiple languages, you can just ignore the locale and just work with the Contentful ID. If you want to reference your home uh, page or like an important landing page you need to have a link to or whatever. So um, we're just querying the image. 
having the contentful ID, a title, the ID of Gatsby, let's remove the IDs because these actually are not relevant to us when building the page. We have the title. Now we have a few fields that are coming from the contentful API. These can be very helpful. For example, file name and the URL. You can already see the uploaded original image. <laughs> Yeah, protocols. So here we go. Um, from the screenshot I just took. And um, also some details we give you from Contentful about the image. So you can already get like the original with height and size in uh, um, bytes. That's the data you get like by default from the Contentful API. You can also filter by content type. That might be interesting. Um, if you're working with assets on Contentful and you're starting to have stuff that are not an image, you should probably consider filter by content type as well in your query, because maybe you end up with a PDF and trying to send it to um, to some um, code that expects an image. So yeah. filtering by content type is very helpful. You can even do it by star. Actually, let's show it. Um, so up here, you have a filter. Mm -hmm. You can go to image, file, content type, and then the pro would go for regex and would say it should start with uh, image and a slash. And this is like already enough to be sure that these images are images. It, that these actually, this will now filter the posts and only posts that have an image as image will show up. So when you accidentally upload a PDF on the image, it just won't show up. Might not make too much sense in this example, but you have other cases where you just try to show the um, um, load assets from Contentful and you run into the point where an editor uploads a PDF suddenly and then you're in a safe way, a safe site if you check for an image actually on the query. That is a nice, deeply, nice deep filter, I have to say. That's quite nice <laughs> that you can filter that down, that down so much. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can do actually a lot of stuff with this also due to the uh, flexible way to creating a content model in Contentful. So cool. Let's... So we explored the content model, huh? So uh, so what we what we did so far then is that we connected to Contentful and we have our first query, don't we, Bene? Yes, we have. Let's show some data from images, maybe. Or no, let's postpone this. Let's postpone <laughs> freestyle. <laughs> freestyle. So. So we um, we finished our first step. We're now connected to Contentful, and we want to actually show our posts on on the site. So let's do this. Um, I will edit our index route for now, and add a query over here, and just display it on the page to speed things up. And because nobody cares how I write an import of React or whatever, I would just use this one to quickly copy paste it down here. <laughs> this is the really lazy way. So what you can do when you when you do that on your own pace is um, you can take the same way. You can look at the pull requests going step by step, and um, we're we're doing that here too. So if if you have questions uh, later on or have issues, um, that's where you find additional resources and how how we approach things. Yes. Um, so I will show you in a second what this all does. Um, okay. Need to get the uh, JS modules where they are. Ah, they don't exist anymore. And that's too bad. All right, so let's get the data first. So what we have is here the query. That's basically the query we could have built before in uh, GraphQL. So let's just copy paste this in our GraphQL interface. And as you can see here, it's now requesting the images. Um, if you have a closer look, you can already see base 64 encoded data, which gives us the nice fallback from Gatsby plugin image. 
And this is basically the data we will soon get inside our page. So we export and query inside of a page in Gatsby, and it will like uh, um, it will be passed via the data prop and in, on the index component. So we just get it out of the data. That's always um, the key here. Is always the name you have done here. You can all also call it however you want. It's all posts. Um, so by doing this, we get an array of posts. Um, which we show off the, on the home page. For this, we store it inside of a component that is responsible for displaying a post. I already put this inside of another component to uh, be later on able to show it on different sub pages. So let me just get, get that code as well. Roger, are you, ba are you back on track? I see that you had some, some problems with the environment variables. <laughs> nice. Roger is on track. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, did I copy the wrong one? I did. Oh, I didn't. Oh, good. So we have this. Then we need a hashtag as well. So good. So now we are prepared. So we have um, we have a list of components that shows us uh, that lists us um, this teasers based on our query. How does the actual comp component look like? It's a clutter of um, CSS images and links. It's a images and links basically. Um, let's simplify stuff here because we're not using this yet. So it shows us an image. Because um, I copied the wrong file. I'm sorry. It's too much. I'm very, very sorry for this. Let me just no reboot on this. I will do it a little bit different. Let's go in here. We want to list posts on home. Yes. Source pages. Yes. Components. Yes, also here's my module file I was looking for. It's also now smaller because this already all uh, contained the uh, fancy changes we're gonna do afterwards. So this one, a little bit of CSS, make stuff. Amy, this will be quick. available later um, on uh, YouTube too. Um, so the Gatsby folks told me that it will be live, I think next week. Um, we're going to also share that when the recording is out with the Contentful developer newsletter or in our Contentful Slack community. So if you want to um, get notified when it's online, um, you can catch us there too. Also, don't worry, this copy pasting will stop pretty soon and we are, uh, will start from, from like working on these components to make it more pretty and adding features. I don't want to like now explain you how to write a diff and um, put some CSS on it to make it look pretty. So let's so yeah. Arisa says no worries, Benedict. We have we have <laughs> time. Hashtag, yes, here, that's, I want to start small and then extend and show you how you can make <laughs> it very nice in a fast fashion. So also this is way less, yes, no, no, we're going there. So um, as usual, like, let's just reload and see, okay. Yes, Gatsby image doesn't find it. Pretty sure because it shouldn't load it. I think I confused um, Gatsby a little bit by commenting in and out so often. Yes, it, that. Let's restart it. Doesn't like it when you change too many files and renaming them and all of this. But it's more due to Webpack, I guess, as Gatsby itself. Here we go. Or it's simply me, and I'm not trying to blame the system instead of my own mistake. 
Yes. I thought I had just copied this. Closing, closing. Any tabs so people can easier follow. This is no important. Um, I, I'm running um, Gatsby version 3, but in release candidate, I think there's still one bug inside with the dev environment. So um, you shouldn't have the problems I have when you just freshly start off with this. Hello. Here we go. Now we're getting data. And as soon my internet connection wants, we will even see images but it wouldn't be a live coding session if everything works straight ahead okay i had to do a reload that shouldn't happen very sure that's related to the dev environment so what we have we have now the data here on the side and it's just all the posts including the new one we just created it's on there it's pretty zoom so uh, maybe keep it so people can see. So what did we do? We changed our index route. We added a query that gets the data we want to show. We have the title, the image with the new Gatsby image plugin. We will go, um, I will show you more detailed how to use it um, in a moment when we do the other images. Um, we have the body, some the hashtags and the created date with that format string feature I mentioned before. Um, we get the data inside the data property and we have a loop inside of here that loops through the array of posts and passes a single post in all post teaser of component. This component doesn't do more as like um, outputting the data of an object. So if you look closer, in the end, Here's a highlight the post. We're just putting it like inside of tags. Like we have, we're outputting the created date here inside of the div. We're passing the Gatsby image data inside of the Gatsby image component. Um, and we're looping through the hashtags, which is also just a simple array and outputting it, passing in also to our hashtag component, which itself is even more simple. It takes a title and displays it with a little bit of CSS. Like there's no crazy magic yet in there. It just looks like a little bit much because of all the styles, but I, yeah, it's CSS. It's difficult to find a simple solution or less noisy at least. Um, so cool. Yeah. Um, Billy, Billy Mitchell has a comment or it looks like he's stuck. How, how's the error situation with Gatsby V3 and the Contentful plugin? Can, are there uh, errors thrown or are they incompatible? They should be compatible, right? Gatsby they beat. are compatible. There is a warning you see in the logs. Um, this warning is only about a deprecation I did not follow yet, but it's a new deprecation, so you won't have any effect. The current version online will work, and the warning will be gone very soon. Cool. And what we have now is on index, we have all our images here. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. We have our images. We even have the title. We have the hashtags already put out with some CSS. We have the date when it was posted. Um, yeah, that's it from here. We want to know, make this an actual cool website, like detail page, <laughs> you can click on it. I want to click on fun and see all the other posts that have been fun. Um, maybe see actually the description I put in here. It's not even in there. So maybe let's output that one as well. Maybe we find time to add a swipe navigation for mobile. Let, let's see um, what the time um, let us do. So next step, we want to have detail pages. No, actually, we want to have pagination first. Yes, pagination. Um, for this, we're going to use a plugin um by the community um actually i'm not aware who made it if you're lo um, if you're watching thank you very much it's an amazing api and down there you have that experimental one it would be 
great if it's soon stable it's an amazing idea so um what you can um what, what this plugin does it helps you to create um um, listing pages that have a pagination on it. So you can say, I want to have like five blog posts per page. And then on the second page, I want, want to have the next. Um, you will need to set at some point if you have too much content. So this is a very basic feature. And it was kind of tricky to implement with Gatsby um, before, but then I stumbled around this plug plugin and it's pretty nice to use, I have to say. So let's add it. Uh, implement it uh, and have actually the blocks um, having two sub pages so you can navigate and publish up hundreds of posts without getting bad lighthouse scores. Let's or do it. In the meantime, pages. I will answer a question from uh, Billy and Billy asks, um, is there any way to have user submitted issues? And that is a that is a tricky one. So when you're using when you're using contentful, the idea behind contentful is that you have a certain set of people that have a content management system to publish data. So for the way to, um, for user generated content, let it be, um, I don't know, comments, images, what else could people submit? Um, you might wanna use something more database-y like, um, because you have to make sure that you have to write somehow to Contentful and that is a, that is surely possible, um, but that's not something that we normally um, would recommend um, for user-generated data because the whole purpose of Contentful is to give your non-technical people an interface to edit public data. Yes. And then, then we have a um, general question from Ahmed and uh, they ask if, uh, one question, what do you use for global state, Redux or React Context? <laughs> Any opinion, Benedict? <laughs> depends. Um, depends, but usually context, because Redux is big and tends to bloat. And for like 99% of the use cases, you don't need Redux. Even the creator of Redux, Dan Abranov, he made a post that I guess you don't need title, Redux. Yeah, yeah, you don't need Redux, I think was the post. So there are use cases for it for sure, but in most cases, uh, simple React context is all you need. Yeah. And Arisa had a comment about the images question, and she um, said that when you want to upload things, um, then you have to have a certain authentication flow to do these CRUD operations. And when you really want to have something in the client uploading something to Contentful, you have to be very, very careful that you're not leaking a write token in your applications. So um, for these kind of things, you have to be really evaluate what you want to do. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, like you will stumble upon an API in Contentful where you can do actually CRUD operations. So you can create, update, delete stuff, but this token is very powerful. And as soon as you leak this to the public, people can just delete all your content. You really don't want to do that. So you have to be very careful if you implement yeah. a feature like this. Anush has a random question. What CLI theme are you using? <laughs> um, that's a personal adjusted bullet train theme for us, uh, us uh, all my setters age. Um, a person is in a way that I changed the color contrast of the Japanese color theme because I found it not contrasty enough. So it's actually on my GitHub profile. So if you stalk me, stalk my GitHub profile and look for iTerm, I guess, you will find instructions and the configuration for the colors. So good. I installed the eight. plugin. Should we continue here? I think so. Yep. So let's go. So first of all, we want to have um, a template that's used for these pages. So page one and page two, of course, will like be served by a single template. So you don't have to read, write code twice. So we create a new template. Um, it's a naming convention. You can take it whatever you want, use, name it however you want, but guess we usually use template for such files. And we will use it, call it post listing. 
And fortunately, we already have a page that more or less lists our posts already. So we can simply copy paste all the content in our JS file over here and even take our styling file with us. Nice. So we're basically so, just, we're shifting code around, right? For now, we are shifting code. So my index JS for now becomes my template. It's an, no, this is a, not a smart template. It doesn't know yet how many posts and where to list, but this is the same structure we in the end need um, to um, show our posts. So to have it properly named because of structure mm -hmm. and here we go we have the template now we need to um, use our new imp installed plugin to actually um, yeah paginate through um, these template files so in this case you actually do not need to add it to your Gatsby config like you do to the others this is just a helper plugin so all we need to is to import it actually in our Gatsby Node.js. Um, if you're not uh, familiar with Gatsby, in the Gatsby Node.js, you write code where you define your routes and um, change your web configuration. Gatsby offers a wide variety of APIs and hooks where you can like um, give the build process your own flavor or um, just Move, you can like move it in a way you need it so it fits your project requirements. So um, so what we need, we need pass later on. So let's import it quickly. And we want to have the paginate function from Gatsby awesome pagination. So um, we use the um, default uh, hook for create pages. This is a function you will have find in every um, Gatsby project. Um, I'm using the async pattern here because it is probably the cleanest. So Gatsby gives us actions, actions, and these actions contain an action that's create page. With this page, you can create a sub page. So what we could do now, we could create page and pass it basically tell it, hey, can you please create a page with the, I'm actually not sure about the syntax now. And um, you could say like on the main route, please um, resolve to a uh, component like uh, source templates, post listing. So, this is kind of pseudo code now, but like you can basically tell this function where to find which file or React component, so it will be served on that road. So what we but what what we want, we don't want to have uh, a single page with the listings. We have want to have a paginated paginated listing. So to achieve this, we first need to start and grabbing the data and even seeing hey how many um, posts we even have. And for this, we're writing a GraphQL query in Gatsby. And this will be a very similar one, but it's, uh, if you can have another name, doesn't matter. So we want to have all content for posts again. And now I struggle again what to type here. So let's go back Graphical to GraphQL. Time. Yes, so we want to have all posts. In this post, I need only two information. I need the Slack. And actually later on, I need the title. So how about we just, ah, okay. If you see this, don't worry. You just installed a new dependency and forgot to start your development server again. <laughs> oh, wow. Permission denied. That's new. There's a small chance I used yarn to install for the workshop and that's why it's mixed up. So let's just install again. <laughs> Any questions in the chat? That might be a perfect moment. Well, Henri is there. Hey, Henri, how's life, man? 
And uh, Greg says thanks uh, for I don't know what exactly, but uh, <laughs> we are happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Let's not wait uh, for this. I know the query is correct. We will verify as soon this is done. So we have the query. We just like pretend that this gave us you no know, the result we were expecting, like a list of blog posts with only the slug, the the string we're gonna use in the URL for the detail page later on. So let's get it in here. So this will now query um, Gatsby and get us the data of all the posts. So next we wanna check if there have been any errors. You should always check if there was an error so you can easily figure out um, where you have problems and you don't get unexpected stuff. Really doesn't want to type result result. Okay, now we saw the error as uh, if the GraphQL query failed, and you will know it's in the create pages, so it's when you're creating the routes. Then let's get all the blog posts. Um, we have it in the result data. That's a very much the same structure you have in the routes where you also have the page query. You also get this data property. Here it's in result.data. Then again, um, all contentful posts. This is actually from above here. And we want to have all nodes inside of the data source. So now we have to, uh, the the blog posts in an array and want to paginate over them. Now you might need to, if you want to do it on your own, you might now need to do some fancy mathematics and try to yeah. like structure this on your own. Um, for this, here comes the awesome some pagination. Uh, yeah, some modulus and edge cases you need to take care of and so on. Or you just use the paginate plugin. It expects you to pass the create function. You usually use to create routes in Gatsby. Um, it wants to know how many items there are, so you just pass them at an array. It should actually work if you just pass an empty array with the correct number of uh, correct number of empty items in there. But let's make it the way they um, tell us to do it. So we pass in a simple result that reflects the data set we will show later on. Um, we have to tell it how many items you want to show per page. You probably want to go with 10 for demonstration purposes. Let's keep it at two because you only have four entries yet. Um, and we want to put it in pass pre fix. And for now it's slash. So first page is on slash. The second one is on slash two, slash three and so on. And last but not least, we need to like tell it, hey, with which page you're actually creating uh, with what component you're actually um, using to create a page. So we pass it a component, let's pass, resolve, and you just resolve. So it's here. So if we now restart um, the process again, I expect it to um, create sub pages already, but mm -hmm. they will show all pictures because we did not tell the template yet where to yeah. stop and where to start and so on. But let's start it, see if everything works and also um, check the GraphQL query I just skipped because of the loading. So this looks already way much better. <laughs> File permissions resolved. So, okay. I have to have a um, typo. Huh? Typo. Ah, there it is. It's templates. That's the convention. It's not template. Sorry. Sorry to the audience. So the Gatsby node stuff that we just defined is then run in, at build time. Is that right? So we're defining a lot of routes that should be rendered. Yes, this is uh, um, already happening here on create pages. That, that's where you are um, create. Yeah, that's create pages. Yeah, it's the same name as the hook we just used. And it took now 66 milliseconds when I'm not off to. Yeah. Perfect. Good. This is something I was expecting because I renamed a file but didn't rename the import. So let's just do that. So 
wird, ist es Chill Call Index, so Post, Listing. Yes. This is the bug uh, that Gatsby Core Team told me about. They fixed in the release version already. I'm sorry for this. So this should not happen to you. So it doesn't realize when you rename the files, but the latest version will do that. We have two two questions. Uh, Marius asks, um, are Gatsby starters now all on V3? Probably takes some time, huh? I for sure take some time. Have a look in the package, JSON, to be sure. I mean, the default one has to be updated. Ours is going to follow up pretty um, soon as well. The, soon. Official, the official starter, like I have the PR ready. I have the code ready, but I wanted to wait for the release, which just happened yesterday, um, and release it with the stable version and not a release candidate. So call it for yeah. very soon. Yeah, so, and a little bit off topic from Roger. Yeah. What VS Code extensions do you use to show the bundle size in your, uh, when you import stuff? Uh, yeah, good question. That I, I found it on Twitter and forgot about the name. Let's have a look. So uh, it's import cost by Wix, actually. Yeah. Yep. Greg, Greg, Greg confirms. So a lot of good. import cost fans here. All right. Yeah, I love it. Uh, even when it does not always work as expected, but it helps. It helps if you're importing something really bad and big, it, it, it screams at you, and that's actually what you need. So, um, we started it, it's working now. So let's get on a page. And as you can see, we have a page that shows all blog posts because we didn't tell it yet. But we should have another page. Shows page all two blog is showing posts as all. Well. And here we go. We have page two showing all of them. Amazing. So quickly, let's go back to query before. It gives you this. I forgot to put the slack at the slack in the new post. Did I? <laughs> I yeah. Let's have a look. So this is what we just created. Oh yes. There, I made a mistake in creating the data model. This field is not required. It should be required. And that's why this uh, mistake happened. So on the next start, we will have the Slack field as well for this post. Um, okay, now let's tell our sub pages to actually show only the posts on the page and then add some back and forth arrows and have pagination in there. So what we want to do, we go back into the query because what the plugin does as well, it adds you a few variables you can use inside of your query to limit the result set. So, here we go. It is, we have the post listing query. Let me name it. Actually, you should take care that all your queries inside of your code have a different name. If you don't do this, you might end up in hiccups. Gets people tell you about it, but it might still start. So have a look in this in the warnings or just make sure you name your queries with like unique names. Um, so we have the post and the post. Uh, where is it? Yes. So we have, we, we get two variables. It's skip, which is an integer. And we get limit, which is an integer as well. Uh, don't panic. You can copy paste exactly this outside of outside of the README from the awesome pagination plugin. That's nothing you have to remember. You just get this out of the um, out of the README. Um, and I even made it on the wrong position. So because you pass the variables inside to the query, and then you can use these variables inside of your filter. So what we want to filter, we want to skip and limit as well because graphql supports the same maybe let's show this quickly in here so what we want to automate here are these filters over here so limit two would always give me two posts instead of four and when i tell it to skip two i will get the later two ones so the plugin just automatically fills these variables for us so we can use that filter and instead of having like numbers in there, we can tell it to use, please use a limit, 
variable and you skip as well. I like order, so keep it like this. So this will now tell the query, please only show two items and skip if you're on a sub side. So, and when I'm not wrong, this should already work. Um, so the plugin hooks into sets um, variables for the GraphQL query then, is that right? That's all it does? Yes, basically that, that's what it does. It sets you these variables. It's pretty smart. Yeah, I, li I like it a lot. I have a mistake in there and I wonder where we're having to skip. Please tell me I do not, that's not a restart. I'm not found. Ah, yes, it's a typo. Here we go. Page two, two entries. The one from 1037 and 1036. You maybe can already see what's coming next. No, the one from 1810. Nice. Yeah, we have a pagination. The order is wrong though. This is not chronicle. So let's fix this. Luckily, <laughs> GraphQL ha has us covered. So we can just here tell it, yeah, please order it by the created ad date. And uh, let's see, ascending. Yeah, actually we want to have it ascending. So we paste the sort inside on our query. Pretty should format it. No, it doesn't want to, so I want to make it on my own. Yes. So, so we have a sort as well that sorts us by creation date. It's really a pity now. Was it me? Looks like a curly too much. Yeah, uh, it was, it was me. And then I already, already ran into panic mode and killed the process and restarted it, um, which probably wasn't necessary, but this is fast. And we back. And we have a website. <clears throat> so. And um, I was wrong, of course. Oops. It's the other way around. So we don't want <laughs> ascending. We want it descending. Yeah. Descending. So let's just change this. Reload it. Second page, we have the girl and the bay. And here it is GatsbyConf post a new one on the front page. Here we go. Nice. Cool. So when, when people no, are dealing with pagination, would you you would always recommend awesome pagination, awesome Gatsby pagination or what it is, right? There are for sure other ways. There are for sure other good ways, but I just have good experience with this plugin. It's very, it doesn't do much, but that's why it yeah. can do what it does very well. And I prefer this over yeah. bloated solutions. Not saying there are any bloated yeah. solutions out there. Actually, I may, might not be the perfect person to ask what's the best pagination plugin in Gatsby. Maybe there's another one, but I can really recommend that one. Gotcha. So um, we want um, to have a back and forth link. Um, so you can actually go to the next page. Um, that would be great, right? Nobody is going Let's to change the URL over there. So. There's one more thing what the plugin does for you. It fills your page context. So there's another information you create, you get on every page in context, you get uh, in Gatsby. If you have a page, you get the data, which contains your query data, and you also get a page context. So this gives you information about the page. So maybe let's just output it. Uh, page context and see what's in there. So this is all the information this current page has. Um, so you see the number, the, the uh, index zero count, the human count with the first, the, the stuff that's passed to the query, 
actually all these variables should be available in your query down there and also just to pass to the next page so all we need to do is to create a link that routes us to slash two or the value of this variable and we have a pagination ready with next and previous so let's just do that um, so we get link we import link from Gatsby. This um, is an amazing helper component that just takes care that you're using the router properly and so on. It can just have a, a two over here that links somewhere. And I want to fill it with page context. Um, next page, next page pass it is. And let's call it, give it a title of next and now Next link should show up. I click it and I come to the next page. Wonderful. The same as with the previous. And of course, I don't want to like uh, show them um, 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 when they are not available. So there's a small trick. If you don't know it, let's add the previous first. So I can go back and forth, but also there's that that link over here, which I can just get rid of if I check if the variable is set or not. So, so if we have a previous page path, then render this or that. Some people might hate me now and don't like this syntax. Um, just let me know if you have a cleaner solution. So now the previous link is gone. I scroll down on the next page and I only see the previous and not the next. As soon as we have five in there, we should have three pages. Nice. Yeah. nice. Also some serious editor skills here. Multi-cursor for the win, huh? <laughs> I love it. Uh, I got into that feature for a while and uh, yeah. Same. We have some, uh, some, some question. One evergreen is in there. So Amy yes. asks, is the GraphQL Contentful API different from the Gatsby GraphQL API? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. And that's a major, uh, like one of the most common con points, uh, confusion points out there. So Gatsby, back then when it was like version one, it was really bleeding edge. I mean, it still is, but back then it was really bleeding edge. And then they had this idea of putting a GraphQL database inside of an website rendering software, which is much, but also uh, it gives you a huge tool and a huge power. Uh, tool chain or a box of tools that gives you a lot of features. And back then, Confo didn't have a GraphQL API. Nobody basically had, even Facebook didn't have it at that point of time, even when it's coming from them. And so we used our REST API and made it able that you can use our REST API inside the GraphQL of Gatsby. Um, so no, if you write a query now here in GraphQL, that's not the same query you're going to use on the Contentful GraphQL API, which is on broad global availability only since six months or something, and the plugin is around for more than two years. So this is older, yeah, um, what we're so, using, so, still yeah, powerful so though. Yeah, so Amy, when you have a question about GraphQL and Contentful, always mention what you're using because very often two people talk to each other and then they just figure out that they're talking about different things. So this is just a very important detail. When you're using Gatsby and you have GraphQL questions, it's uh, very helpful to mention that you're using Gatsby. It will speed up um, the process of getting to the yeah, right answer an a answer. lot. <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you tell anybody from Contentful, if you're talking about the Contentful GraphQL API or a GraphQL query you're writing in your project in a framework of your choice, which is in this, um, which is Gatsby or here. So, yeah. Um, so we have another one, which is from Anush. He said, can we paginate without a plugin? Um, I think we can do it, but then we would have to write it our, ourselves, right? Which correct. would be a little trickier. Yeah, that, this is trickier. And it's a lot of um, code to write down just to have exactly the same output. And I would love to show you some other great stuff in here and not writing modulus and other mathematical stuff to get pagination right. Yeah. And then we have a last one from Thomas and uh, Thomas right. asks, what Gatsby plugin would you use for a multilingual lingual contentful site? The Gatsby plugin, I guess? Of course you use our source plugin. That's the way you get the data. <laughs> um, 
to render the data on the page, it gets a little bit tricky. I, for myself, went for a long time with React I18 Next, which had, in my opinion, well, a good React support and um, good documentation, like I could go through, but it's a very, very big, complicated uh, setup. If you want to get fancy and try stuff out, there's a Lingui JS. They just released version three, and I'm very curious to try it out with Gatsby. Maybe, maybe somebody did before, which is like something in between this bloated React i18 Next solution and React um, JavaScript literal template strings. So you need a little bit more as React, but you also don't. You most of the time, don't need like. Um, namespaces and other features in your translations. You just want to have a uh, forename and then have it translated in the three languages of your page and that's it. And for this, uh, you can use some sim simple solutions, but I don't have a drop-in solution for you. I'm sorry. Multilingual nice. multilingu is not It's trivial. always hard. Yes, yeah, always yeah. hard. So, Bene, what do we got? We got now paginated list pages. What's next? What's next? So next is adding some CSS for this. I will copy paste this quickly. And then we create detail pages. So you can actually have a look at the post itself. We have huge uh, thumbnails in here, but we will add um, render the markdown body. So you can write a small text uh, next to your post. So cool. let's do this. Um, we go to our step at pagination and just steal some CSS. This is I see what I now do is just add some styling to the previous and next button. So we have a nice look and feel. Yes. So look. Nice. It didn't load, did not load my uh, CSS. I won't spend no time on getting a link in the right yeah. color. It doesn't matter. So, no, I um, think it's not and there it is. Important. It just took a second to recompile Gatsby. So here we are. We have no pretty looking links. So let's create a sub page. Um, so I assume we, we go to the Gatsby node again, or where, where, where do we do that? Exactly. We go back to our um, create pages. And instead of using the uh, Paginate plugin, like we were still using it, but we will now additionally um, use that create page to create a sub page for the blog post. Um, for this, we need to have a template again that shows mm -hmm. the actual um, blog post and we need to have um, routes being created for that blog post. So let me get um, the um, the component we use for the detail page, and I explain to you what it does. And this is the last big copy paste when I remember properly. Um, of course, not in components, it's in the templates. And we need this branch. Here we go. JS that will as a template for our detail page and we have a little bit of CSS to make it look pretty. Post CSS. Here we go. Also, um, if you're new to Gatsby, Gatsby has an um, amazing um, support for CSS modules. So you can basically just import from and CSS comes out of the box, file huh? comes out of the box and you can just pass it into your class name. Um, I prefer solutions with CSS and JS, but this is awesome that you can, especially for prototyping or a smaller project, just get stuff done. That's some, that's awesome. Not I'm more in the CSS modules camp, so I, I can live with that. 
It's fair. I'm tolerant about this. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so yeah, our post. So what we have is a query. That query gives us the data for a single post. Let's get over to GraphQL and have a look, maybe even try to recreate that one. As you can see, it's already using variables again, because we're going to tell this template now that you want to have um, the post of that ID. Um, let's um, go to GraphQL. So instead of all the posts, we want a single post. And we want to have the title, the slug. Yeah, that's good for now. If you don't give it anything, um, this will actually give you gives, gives you the first result in the database. That's I not know that. really helpful, but you at least get data. So we want to have the ID to be equal um, of an entry. The, so now it's the thing, slug equal. Uh, Yes, you could, but that way, if you use the ID, you can be sure that in a multilingual environment that you have that one mm. entry you selected before, including the locale. So if you filter, um, you fi should filter by the Gatsby ID because that's your most reliable, unique identifier that it's that one um, instance gotcha. of the object. So now I um, don't have any ID in my, my ID in my mind doesn't like empty brackets. So let's copy it. So for example, I want to have that one be this query. Gives me title and the slug of the post of that ID. And this is automatically filled um, from our call and create pages. We will do that in a second. So this is basically the query we have down here. I added um, more information about how to render Markdown. Um, ah, interesting. Actually, let's leave it like this. I'll show you in a second how to render Markdown. So I spoiled it already, but in my case, here we go. Now it will output the Markdown in RAW. So we get the image data, the like the query for that one post. Um, and again, it's a few diffs that just output data out of this one data set. So we create a new Gatsby image from Gatsby plugin image, but we can now find time to play a little bit around with it. Um, and it shows the title, the body, and the hashtags below. That's um, yeah, just a detail page you've seen in the, in the preview at the beginning. Um, now we need to tell Gatsby to actually use that template. Um, for us. Yeah, and where's the ID coming from? I'm still a little confused what you're doing here. Yes, and this I, I, I will show you exactly now. So um, let me have a look at my notes so I don't mix stuff up. Yes. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, sorry. So. Um, Detail pages. Let's create detail pages. So what you want to do is actually pretty trivial. So we, have, we already have that array of blog posts from our first, uh, actually it's not blog posts, it doesn't matter, of posts. Um, and we want just to loop through these um, and create a page um, for each blog post. So we use a very trivial or usual for each. It's not even a need to um, write async code here, Gatsby will handle this for you. Then we need some information by the, uh, from the blog post and here it is, the ID. We want to have it from the post. And then we create a page. And the pattern for this you can find in the Gatsby documentation. You basically tell it where you can find it. It will be pass and uh, post, of course post and slug. So that's where you find it, it's the route. Then you need to tell it um, which component, it's the same pattern as above. As you then we'll see, paginate is really just a wrapper about this create page function you usually use to create a page in Gatsby. 
So we will use this template. And now the ID is coming. Now we can actually pass our context in here. And this context mm. is the page context you have in here. And gotcha. it's the same and it's available as variables in here in your queries as well. So mm -hmm. here is where we pay, uh, where we send the ID in. Now, if you uh, looked closely, there's no ID up here, ID up here. So that's added. So now we're reading the ID yep. as well. Um, loop through the result and create a page with the slug from the query side and pass it the ID. So the sub page can actually get the ID and just gets a single content full post out of Gatsby with the information we need to show it. Actually, we don't need the ID in here. Um, so, so in, in Gatsby yeah, Node, what we did is we fetched data once, and then we built up the pagination, and we built up the detail pages with the same data that we received, right? Correctly. Um, we will even do the same one, the same for the hashtags later on. So we will use a si simple loop to gather all the hashtags to create hashtag listing pages. But let's not uh, tell you too much about what we're going to do next. So yeah, let's start it. Should be complete. If you do changes to your Gatsby node, you have to restart your uh, dev process. Um, in most cases, you will get a pop-up that tells you about this. I guess this is broken my uh, in my release version as well. Maybe mentioning but again. I guess that, this, that makes this... sense, right? Gatsby node is really like the underlying thing that defines where things live. I mean, it makes sense to restart after changing these. Exactly. You did. You define the outer conditions of the whole website in that file, and um, that's something that cannot hot reload. You need to restart yeah. it. So let's reload, and we have the same output. So how do I know now? With w which pages I have, there's a sim simple trick. I just put whatever I want at the end and press enter. Gets me dev <laughs> as an amazing 404 dev page that actually gives you a searchable list of all pages that have been generated. So if Gets you're pro tip, <laughs> if you lost, tell it you are lost and press enter, and it will help you to get no more lost again. Um, here we go. Gets me conf. And there's a sub page. I put a space in the slug. That shouldn't happen. Um, <laughs> but still, I have a sub page. I have a title that was already outputting my content. It's not formatted yet that we're going to do next. I see the, the hashtags. I'm using the same component from the start page over here. So cool. Next step is linking these babies. So we can actually click, uh, click it. So. Let's link it from our post listing we had before. Um, be no post usual, teaser. Like Gatsby link, right? Just wrap it in and that's it. Yes, that's it. That's amazing. So you can just do link. You replace the outer div with the link hmm. and just tell it where to point to. Um, like in my bigger projects, I have like a helper function that actually creates these uh, prefixes and so on for me. So I don't have to maintain like this uh, prefix here with post and all the files. So I can really recommend to have some central yeah. file where you configure stuff like this, but for demonstration here. So post.slug is what we need. So this will only work when the listing actually tells the teaser about the slug. And as we can see, we already query this. That's amazing. Maybe one information here, you should be really careful what you add in here. If you add in here too much, this will be attached to your payload on the website. So Gatsby is fast. But if you tell it mm. to load like all the data in this query as well, all this data will be attached to that page and it will be loaded when a user goes on it, even when you don't do anything with the data. So be careful that you uh, don't like, um, um, bloat this query. It should only contain what you actually show. And that's what Gatsby uh, GraphQL is big with. Bene is on a pro tip move here. So yes. so what you're saying is your page queries should really be very tidy to with the data that you're actually using. Yes. 
Correct. Uh, we have um, one question from Philip, um, and he's asking. Um, we're probably we're running a little bit short on time soonish, but he's asking, can you tell us more about that function that you how you would approach that function that you mentioned, this helper function? Yeah. Okay. Um, what I usually do, I get the content type. Um, oh, I do uh, the same in other projects. Yeah. And and <laughs> what I uh, um, here, give me pass. Yeah, let's make it casual over here. So I have a content type and the slug. And what I basically do then, if content type, I uh, uh, post, then I return this function like slash amazing post and the slug for it. And then I would just use give me pass in here, tell it, hey, I'm working yeah. with blog posts at the moment or posts, and we are talking about this slug. Could I, could I get the content type back from the graphical? Could it be in the post object itself? I'm totally derailing this, but. Uh, yes, you can. And uh, it's, it's Gatsby, it's actually no problem. So let's do it. Um, so you have it here in the sys. It's a little yeah, bit nice. hidden down there, but here you have the information you need. Um, actually, good that I maintain this code. I'm not sure. Is there one on top level? No, there isn't. Uh, and it's it's good. So we have we want to avoid as many um, coll collisions as possible. So we take the type as well. It really doesn't want me to. So then we could pass in just the complete object, right? And then it would just return everything by itself. Ah, uh, sorry, I copied from the wrong. I was already confused. Like, okay. So we get the content type, and when I want to I get it in a query, the query passes it into our post teaser. So that's why I go back to the post teaser file. And now the post would be can of course make it a little bit more beautiful, but for sake of quick demonstration, it was post.sys content type sys.id, I think. So, yeah. and now it should route us to amazing blog post. And it's linked here, it's already amazing post dot Gatsby. You see that Zoom actually? Can you Did see I this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Uh, okay, that's supported. Nice. So uh, yeah, the space, but basically here, the amazing post it now found out based on content type. And that way you could have a function that just takes care that your, um, your routes are all aligned the same way. And if you somebody decides, oh, amazing post is not good for SEO. So let's go back to post. You change it at one position. Uh, you go back to home, you click it. And it works already. So now I have to find, you will want to have this function inside of another file you imported from. Yeah. Um, that, but that's something that always itches me when I see this hard coded URLs and templates, because then you, at some point you have to go into 15 files when something changes. So I would definitely have a util function somewhere. Absolutely. Now this could be like in a helpers JS and if this function has five lines, it's fine. It just helps you to yeah. keep stuff um, aligned and you don't have dead links later on somewhere because you forgot to, because you tried to find all the slash posts in the editor, but you did a mistake because the slash was missing. And yeah, yeah there totally. are a lot of mistakes that can happen. So yeah, we linked it already. So you just take the Gatsby link and pass it around the route you want to link it to and you end up on the detail page. Here we go. So uh, next thing, rendering markdown, um, which is a um, um, feature I like a lot. Markdown is great. I'm a big fan of uh, MDX. And um, let's try the little brother here. What's um, MDX? The been? older brother. The old, uh, what's MDX? Good question. Um, MDX combines the power of markdown and React. Um, it's a principle that you can add like 
smart tags to your markdown. I kind of think of it like web components might become at some day. So you have an, an, not a an diff tag in there, you have an, an image tag. The image is a bad example, maybe a video, a YouTube video tag, and you just have to pass it on URL to a YouTube video. And in the background, your system knows, hey, you, you, YouTube video tag is supposed to actually render a YouTube video, and then this tag gets replaced by an iframe. And you can build very complex design systems with uh, MDX. Um, but for now, we're just going to use Not Markdown. Not today. <laughs> for now, we're just using Markdown to get some headlines and text formattings and so on. Um, okay. Um, if you want to render Markdown in Gatsby, you have to use a plugin, even when a transformer plugin, and even when you are using it with Contentful, because um, we are just a data store. We are we don't do anything with your data. It's um, it's basically on your own. So let's install the latest version of Gatsby Transformer Remark. That's a plugin you will also come along very often. As soon you have Markdown in your Gatsby, you're going to have this transformer in there. Um, the question before about the order, yes. Uh, it should work if you put it to top, but I just have a better feeling when anything that transforms data is after some stuff that stuff that's gets fetches. that's fetches data mm. shouldn't matter but i have just a better feeling we don't need to have any configuration in there that's we can just pass the string of the the title or the id of the plugin the installation is done and we can already start our server again and have a look in graphic graphical because we just got new fields that will actually help us rendering markdown with only a few lines of code this will be you no know, nice. very, very small change to render Markdown, and that's one of the great power of Gatsby. So, are we online? Yes, we are. So, GraphQL, we have our blog post in here. And the body before, ah, that's perfect. <laughs> Maybe a pro tip as well. As you can see, this is the body I output before, and there's no single new field. This is small pro tip because you didn't reload because this is caching. So you really want to reload um, your whole GraphQL as soon you are expecting new fields to appear. And as you can see, suddenly we have children marked on remark and child marked on remark down here. And that's what we're looking for. So body body just gives us the content of a text field. We want the HTML so we can open child marked on remark and get some interesting stuff. First of all, there's the HTML. This is now the markdown converted to HTML and it also has some nice other stuff like it can count the number of words you have in your text. Oh, that's useful. Um, based on this information, it can even tell you how long it takes in minutes to read. With all short text, this will all be one, so I didn't implement that feature. It even has a table of content you can generate. Nice. And um, you can use all re Markdown Remark plugins that are available for Remark and Gatsby you can use with Contentful. We are just using, we are just putting our data into Markdown Remark and from that point on you can do whatever you, you want in, within the Mark, Markdown ecosystem. So we are not limiting here at all. The only thing which might be weird is the front matter is there but it actually doesn't exist for us. Um, another feature we are going to use is an excerpt that just gives you a small short variant of your text. So maybe I just want to have here 10 characters preview because the design requires it. It can give you a short version of your text. So you can have an automated teaser text. You don't need to maintain yeah. two text fields for the short and long version. Um, yes, and all this we are now going to use. Um, let's um, add our query first. That means we take our this part we just edited and go into our detail page. Detail page has the body in here, and next to the body is the child marked on remark. We don't need the body anymore. 
we actually also don't need the word count and the teaser text or excerpt for now. We just want the HTML. And what we do now is to output it. Let's do it. Yes. So this will fail on purpose. So not only uh, I somehow <laughs> change the layout but also as you can see it's formatted but there's it's uh yeah safe in html uh, in jsx you can't just put um, html code that's why here's one of the few moments where it actually makes sense to use a feature of react that allows you to actually inject html from a string you should really 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 not do that if you have data that can come from a user people are going to abuse it you're in the internet be aware of that yeah. um so you're opening up xss right yes so that's why they call it dangerously set inner html and that's also why this function has such an insane stupid html uh, api you have to put it underscore underscore and i hope it's only to, yeah Okay, my editor tells me, but you have to do it with the double underscores. And they do this on purpose to tell you, hey, you're doing something here that has a high potential of a security risk. And that's why this is so long and verbose. And yeah, it, it, should, it has to hurt. That's, the, that's on purpose. Um, so let's go back. Oh, I have a headline and a format text over here. Nice. Still, the layout is to the left. Only on that subpage, okay. This is, um, I also blame again the release candidate of Gatsby 3 on it. There was a server side rendering issue, and I think that's the reason for a lot of the small hiccups we have here. Here, another example where I have a quote which doesn't get too much CSS yet, but yeah, we have subpages and Markdown rendered. So, how about we add um, in here another information um the the teaser text inside of the listing pages so before we do that let's answer a question Bina. of course and it could be that we both disagree here now so thomas asks uh, isn't rich text more powerful than markdown with contentful data um, <laughs> <clears throat> okay so rich text is a powerful tool and it works great if you're using it within the rich text ecosystem, but there are some limitations you really struggle to go around. So if you have like, if you want to have like more complex layout or not just text top bottom, then you might want to use another solution or wrap rich text inside of another solution. But rich text is great if you want to like have paragraphs, titles, like the, the basics of Markdown, it supports as well. But with Markdown, you can go further. You can actually put an iframe into your Markdown. That might not be the smartest idea, but it can be a use case where this is helpful. And that's what Rich Text, for example, won't support. Also for a good reason. So it's always, it's pro and cons. They're both very powerful ways to format your content. I can yeah, recommend I, I... both. Yeah, I, I agree here though. The, the thing with which text is um, when you use Markdown, you can use a Markdown renderer that works in a certain ecosystem. When you go with rich text in any format, um, you have to do a lot of rendering um, and it becomes a little bit um, trickier the more stuff you have in the rich text field. Um, so I would also advise to evaluate what your use case is and um, what data structures you're dealing with. What we might also want to mention that Contentful is not a CMS for the web, for websites. It's made for uh, the ideas to, that you can use this API on all the kind of devices and projects you do. So if you have, for example, your website has an, an Android app and an iOS app as well, and you want to have the text formatted in the same way on the website, on the iOS and on the Android, rich text will you will get you quicker to a solution or to a working as trying to render markdown within iOS or Android that will get very, very tricky to render markdown or not web environment. So you have to consider yeah. this. That's Especially when you have iframes in, in your stuff there. <laughs> well, 
you can always cheat by having iframes in your <laughs> iOS app, but that kind of defeats the purpose to doing it nat yeah. native. So, or so HTML in general. Yeah. Please, if you can avoid this, please always try to avoid putting iframes or similar yeah. web views inside of your um, app. Native yeah, and, and Daniel has a has a quick question: Is uh, could you also use uh, Markdown and transform it to JSX components and modules? I'm sure that's possible somehow, right? Yes, and this is basically what MDX does. So MDX basically is in it actually is more or less JSX, and you just have like these Markdown syntax you can use, but in the background a hashtag is converted to an H1 tag. In, in a JSX uh, variant, and then it goes passed down and will be rendered by React. Um, it's a different approach. MDX is also reaching version two, hopefully very soon, uh, fixing a lot of bugs. And yeah, I can't, can't wait for it. Exciting times. Cool. Let's, let's add, add the excerpt. Yes, let's do that. So here um, we had the body in there already so also here i made the mistake of adding all the body text to the page listing you shouldn't do that you're bloating so it should have been like this because i'm not outputting the body we are now going mm. to output the body and for this i need the child marked on remark again and i want to put an excerpt in the format of plane again usually i would do that in a GraphQL, I'm trying to speed up a little. I don't want to truncate and break words. And I decided that 60 is a nice number for our example. So what we do here is more or less exactly the same. We have on a page, on a post detail page, I just copied a diff into our teaser. And instead of um, outputting the HTML in our post body remark, I am taking the excerpt and this should work already. I think you had a typo. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, what Nick, was... Nick is also telling us that we're having a typo. Uh, Th thanks, Nick. That'd be also interesting. Small peek and gets we three. This overlay is new. Um, it's also a bug if you scroll down on my version. That's also fixed on the released version. So this is like a new feature that is just in Gatsby that you have that nice arrow warning and so on. Um, if you haven't yeah. played yet with version three or the latest. So, and here we go. It didn't do anything. And here we go. Here we go. So it's all linked. Ah, yes. This is because I forgot to add some CSS in the last step. This whole thing is a link element now, and by default, browser give you the underline and the coloring. So just that's all right. I think we can we can keep it. That is, we have we have ten minutes left. Do you think we can uh, squeeze something else in? Yes. Um, let's have okay ten minutes, and then uh, <laughs> it's forty. Yeah, it's sporty. Do we have <laughs> Q&A afterwards still? We um, made it kind of in between, so maybe you can stretch out a little. Uh, I'm not sure what happens on the platform. OK, um, how about we ask, ask, ask the audience? So I give you three options. More pagination, um, hashtag detail pages, or Gatsby plugin image. What do you want to see? I know what I want to see. So Dan says pag pagination, plugin image, plugin image, plugin image. <laughs> okay, sorry Dan and sorry Billy, but okay, yeah. yeah. This Let's talk horrible. about Gatsby image. <laughs> okay, so and the other stuff is also, was also a little bit of candy. Like we're just repeating some of the patterns. I would have shown you how you navigate in Gatsby um, by uh, programmatically, so you can have an event that actually fires a route change. But that's um, that's all stuff you can learn in the Gatsby documentation. It's great and it's not related to Contentful at, at all. So let's have a look at the Gatsby plugin image because it's great stuff. So. I have to say I, I I made it work with the with Contentful, but I'm not the most professional you can ask about it. But maybe let's have a look um, inside of a query first and see what options we have down there. Maybe dig a little bit in a GraphQL and see how the data will look. So we have that one post of us already in here. That's perfect. So 
There we query it already. Let's have a look if this does what we want. Yes, it gives us the screenshot. Amazing. So before you had like this fluid fixed stuff, and now you just have that Gatsby image data field. It can give you a dynamic um, return value. That's why you don't have to add any fields like you had before. You had to add like all these stuff in your fixed or fluid. This is all gone, luckily. It will just give you the data that you need and the data you get, you throw into the new Gatsby plugin image React component and it will just show the image. You don't have to take care to, to take you note know, the fluid or the fixed. You don't need to, need to change the data, where to pass it and what property. No, you just ask for the data, you take the data and throw it inside of the component. I really like the new concept. Um, is this is this a GraphQL thing or is that a Gatsby thing? I've never seen something something like that, that you don't have to define the children and the fields going down. I actually don't know. Um, I am very sure that this is in some way a GraphQL feature. Um, GraphQL is a huge standard, so it's maybe Contentful doesn't implement it because there was no need for it. Mm. Um, so um, aspect ratio well, um, is always great. Um, it was explained yesterday already, so you can just make sure all the images have the same height. You could do this before, but it was tricky. Um, that way you can just measure, hey, this image is going maximum, getting 960 pixels uh, width. I, uh, I think I actually really just checked it in here, maybe with. So you basically just check, hey, my, how much space do I have available? 884 in my case. So CSS changed a little bit. So you could optimize the snow even further. Um, something like this, or maybe a little bit more, just to be sure. Um, so the images will have now the correct size. What else can we do? We have these three new layouts. That's the fir first thing you actually want to have a look at. Um, they have an if you didn't see it yesterday or forgot about it, there should be that amazing video that explains to you the different layouts. And this helps me a lot to actually understand what the features are now. Let me see it here. That one is it. So here you can, well, let's make it full screen. Here you can see pretty well what the different layouts are. So the first one is just a fixed size, an image. You know this is not going to change. Maybe the the logo of a partner company that's always 150 pixel on all the few ports. Then you have the constraint, which is more or less the responsive image we're always trying to do. And the full width is really an image that uses the full viewport to determine which uh, image to load. As far I understood the code, the constraint variant is actually checking the container size to load the image and not the viewport. That's um, that's a new query type, which is a proposal in CSS at the moment that you don't, you can check, hey, is my parent diff 200 pixel, not the viewport, because sometimes you have yeah. things next to each other and so on. So constraint is the default. That's where what you want to use the most. Full wolf is going to be your header and fixed is the, yeah, the logo maybe. You have some of the five logos of your partner companies um, somewhere. Um, that's what you decide first, one of these three layouts. And afterwards, you want to pass the width or height. That's what we did already. The graphic, uh, put it next to it. So you always start with the layout. Then you put a width and start fresh. So this will now get us images with maximum 890 pixels width. And depending how they big they are displayed on a website, you will get the image of that size. Then um, with the aspect ratio, we can make sure they are square, for example. So with one. Then um, Next interesting thing is placeholder. That's these blurred images you all know from Gatsby plugin image. And there's actually a, a, a neat new feature. So maybe just to confirm here that web P variant is will be now a non-square image. Great. Ah, because I think we have the padding automatically. 
yes, you can't see it, it adds um, black padding to it. So if you want to have a um, an image to zoom in, you can actually, uh, I need to take it from here, resizing behavior. This is because this is our Conantful API. It has, has different ways to actually add, um, to, to resize your image. So what we actually want is crop. Crop um, just is like an uh, and fill in CSS. No, crop is actually, sorry, my mistake. I, was it fill? I have to try now. I never get these right. Uh, here we go. No worries, <laughs> fill, it, fill is what we what we know. Yeah, well, fill is the same in CSS if you have the object fit or the back, background position. It's fill for the same behavior. So, but what you also want is having uh, is to have an um, and preview. So uh, as long the the internet connection is slow, you want to have some preview and placeholder basically for an image. The default is dominant color. Um, it um, uses sharp in the background to figure out which is the most dominant color. And now you can see this takes a little bit longer. And the reason is it actually now downloads the image from Contentful, throws it into the same code as you as you do you do it with Gatsby plugin image in from any data source and figures out that this color here is the most um, primary color. So it's a That's dark <laughs> violet. Okay. Um, what we also support is traced um, SVG and blurred. These two you know already from Gatsby plugin image. That just gives you exactly the same an SVG or a small pixel preview, but the dominant color is the default now. Um, and it's a solution that um, is known from Pinterest, for example, and gives you a very small payload. And then you, depending on what you have, you can then decide, nah, I'd rather have like a, a blurred preview of my image. So maybe let's um, show this quickly in the listing, how these behave. So I put the blurred before you saw this in a, a million times. So it is dominant underscore car color. Yes, let's copy paste. So instead of having these blurry previews, I just change my query. I go back here and I stop the server. Oh, interesting. This should not have happened. I will investigate later. I will. So for the dominant color, Bene, is that done at build time then? So when I'm having hundreds yes. of images? Like all your queries you have in your, um, all GraphQL queries are going to be executed on build time in Gatsby. You're, there's no GraphQL available on the actual website. That would be way too much. So all the stuff is happening on build time, either while your dev process is doing it in background for you, or I, wow. Okay, I think I got a small mistake in there. That's uh, all right. So let's do some questions, and I think then we can uh, can wrap it up slowly. Yes. Um, so Thomas asks: um, So with dominant color, you have to add the option to download contentful images. I understood that it's doing that automatically. Is that correct? Correct. correct. It does it automatically for you in the background. Uh, I just mentioned this because it takes a moment yeah. uh, to uh, actually process and this will not show up straight away. So that means when I have 100 images during the build, Gatsby will download 100 images, do all this yeah, preview stuff. So correctly. maybe treat it with care a little, I guess. Yes, um, especially when you're going for these fancy traced SVGs. Do we have an example in here? Give me a picture. So. People not yeah, so I think uh, Thomas thinks that the images will still be served from Contentful, right? But to generate the whatever, they have to be downloaded because otherwise you cannot generate a color or a traced SVG or something. Is that right? Correct. Uh, we will store a small um, duplicate of the image um, 
and showed actually we used the very same API and do something like giving you a 16 pixel big variant of the image like this one. And this one we will like even make a little bit smaller and then put into the um, in, into the um, yeah into yeah. the response or the payload of the page. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Billy asked if there are any comments uh, from the Contentful Images API versus Cloudinary. Um, so Cloudinary for sure has more functionality. Um, so um, I would say it depends a little bit on uh, what you need from your images and assets. And then you should evaluate what you what you use. Is Gatsby image plugin, is there some advanced Cloudinary stuff in it already? I know that they have been working on a Cloudinary support plugin. Mm. And the way the Gatsby image plugin, plugin image is structured, you will know they will come up with more and more helper functions. And you can even write your own. There should be even here helper functions. I think there should be. No, not here, but there should be some documentation how to write your own. So the, as soon you pass Gatsby plugin image uh, function that can create URLs, like we do it up here, we just add parameter to an URL, as you can see up here. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore, but um, then you can use any service like Cloudinary or your own hosting platform. Yeah, yeah, yep. that makes sense. I, I think it's a, it's worth pointing out that the images will still be loaded from your images image service if it's contentful or something else. Um, as far as I understood, the new Gatsby image plugin um, is just smarter in laying it out and building these URLs for you. Is that correct? Uh, yes. <laughs> Not uh, that I'm telling uh, lies here. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 a helper. Um, it's a huge helper and. Uh, for 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 contentful, you don't have to. Um, we we take care of everything. What you get, um, the the result you get is already in a shape that is working wonderful with a Gatsby plugin image. Except you said the special placeholders. I just found out, but this is going to be fixed very soon. <laughs> cool. Let let's wrap up a few more questions, and then uh, Reza ask. I'm I, I don't know. So question is word by word. How you set Gatsby image sharp for relative URLs in the API? So how to use sharp? With the Gatsby plugin image is the question. Gatsby image sharp for relative URLs. Maybe Reza, you can uh, uh, rephrase the question and we can uh, come to it later. Then we have Yuda um, who is asking, will the image variations be cached? Um, um, so our, um, you will, the images are served from the Contentful Image API. That means they come with the um, with the header, with the cache header, and they will be cached on the browser side. If we are using these images to like get this traced variant or the background, the blurry variant or the most uh, the dominant color, these will be cached as well on your machine inside of the regular Gatsby cache. So as long as your process uh, somehow caches the .cache folder, this stuff will be cached for you as well. So you don't cool. have to worry about. And then we have Amy and uh, they say, I'm using Gatsby image. Do I need to change over to Gatsby plugin image? What's the recommendation? You do not need to, but I heavily recommend it's not that hard. You have to change a little bit of your queries. You have to use the other component. I'm do, doing in my own projects a little bit more fancy layouts. And with Gatsby image, it was really sometimes painful to apply special CSS to the images, like make them floating, moving, using uh, some animations and so on. And with the new plugin image, it's way easier. Like it's uh, straightforward. You can pass the properties where you need them to pass them and just applies the CSS as you expected. And there, thank you, Thomas. There's that migration guide. Um, be aware if you're using Contentful, um, if you're using the code mod, it might change your queries in a way for Gatsby source file system or Gatsby sharp, like the regular way. You might need to change it to like one or two lines to kind of full specifics. Cool. And then we have probably the uh, perfect question, which is, uh, do you need Gatsby v3, I guess, for the uh, Gatsby plugin image? For the Gatsby plugin image, yes, there 
is a version in the latest v2 as well but you shouldn't use that one you use gatsby plugin image please with v3 but all the content for stuff if you leave out gatsby plugin image fanciness you can do on version 2 already so if you for some reason stuck on version 2 or just don't have the time to upgrade we all have jobs uh, or family whatever um it's not needed you can use it with version 2 as well might be also interesting i am planning to backport critical um, bug fixes and similar stuff to version 2 so if we find some problems in v3 we're gonna backport to v2 as well cool bene we made it yes not cool, as far thanks. as we hoped but still that's happy. that's good enough so let me let me um uh, hijack the screen so thank you everybody for for hanging out and doing some coding with us um so you find the repository that bena was working on here so under ctfl.io um slash gatsby conf workshop there are a lot of um, prs open um, all the things that bena um, did here on stream you can follow along i'm myself having an eye on issues there so if you have any troubles or something um file an issue and i will get back to you after i consulted mr benedict <laughs> <laughs> and um thank you so much all for hanging out um if you also have an additional questions or want to hang out with us and chat with us in real time you can go to contentful.com developers so um we hang out or i personally hang out at slack every day and i'm checking um out all the things that are going on there and with this, I want to give a huge shout out to Benedict, who was very brave to do some live coding in front of Thank a you. lot of people today. You're welcome. I hope everybody enjoyed the session. And yeah, have, have fun. I, I think you can actually use that project for some fun personal project. Hope this is more helpful as the regular. Let's make yet another personal blog example. <laughs> cool. And with yeah. this, we're, we're calling it a day. It's pretty late here in Germany. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. And I hope you had a fabulous time at uh, GatsbyConf. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.